Okay guys, the model is cured. So I used some uh, sticky tack. You can find this in like the office supply section. It's used usually for like mounting posters and stuff. Um, if you work it a little bit, which means just kind of pull it between your fingers till it heats up, you can stick it to the bottom. And then this is just a hook so I can hold it like this. I'm gonna put primer on this first. Um, this is my paint booth. This is something I got off of Amazon. So it came with the lights and exhaust. And you can see right here, it goes right on out the window right there, which is kind of nice. So it really traps all the fumes. This is really good when you're doing airbrush work. And uh, that's what I use it for. Um, you can see I have my airbrushes here as well. Uh, we're using an Tamiya surface primer. Um, this is really good stuff. It goes on nice, covers nice, very thin at the same time. Uh, so we're gonna shake that up. And then you just want to do this nice and gentle, just in quick coats. There you go. One thing that I do see is I saw, I don't know if you guys caught that too, but I saw a hair stick to it, or lint or whatever. So we're going to use the tweezers to pull that off. Yeah, just like that. We're going to let that dry. We can do some sanding on it, but this gives us a good base for our paint. Um, and uh, so we're probably not going to do a whole lot of sanding just because this is going to just sit on the layout. It's going to be nice and quick, easy detail type of stuff. Um, but we will let that sit. And uh, when it's dry, then uh, later we're going to paint it. We're probably going to do like a maroon color. Um, just something nice. Uh, maybe even see about doing like a couple black stripes down the hood or something. So get ready for next steps. All right, we're going to give this a shot. This is the color we're doing, this uh, Kiln Red Metallic. It's by Model Master. This is a discontinued company, by the way, so good luck finding it. Um, but it's really pretty. Uh, we put some of that into the airbrush along with... Um, let me tilt this down so you can see it. Along with uh, enamel thinner. Yeah, can't see very well. And basically, anytime that you're mixing paints for an airbrush or thinning them, you want them to like a milk-like consistency. It's the best way I can describe that. All right, here's our car. You're gonna want to do this in just nice thin coats. To start with. It's called a dust coat. Okay. Saw the hair blowing to that. You start to see some color coming through right there. We're gonna keep adding. A little thicker this time. If you do it too thick all at once, it's gonna run, and you don't want that. You just want a nice, pretty color. You don't want it to be runny. There we go. Boy, that looks nice. We're going to go ahead and just spray some on the undersides. Get up in those wheel wells. Just like that. There's a lot of details we will end up hand painting on this. But this is starting to look really nice. Move some lighting down here starting to definitely look really nice. Just like that. 
can still kind of see some of the lines on the side from 3D printing right there. But, eh, you know, people aren't really going to look at that. Like I said, it's going to be on the layout. It's about whether or not it looks good from a certain distance. Pretty happy with that. One thing you can do, so when using the airbrush, this is pushing down and getting air, and then you pull back to get paint. Always leave it off and then gentle, gentle pull back. However, you can leave it just on just straight air just and blow air on it just to kind of help it dry and set. In between layers, it'll kind of speed up the process just a tiny bit. It'll also help make sure it doesn't run too bad. And then it gives you a chance to like touch up on anything that you miss. Cause like I see a few spots there that I didn't spray very well. Just like that. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And then we will uh, hand paint some nice uh, details onto that and uh, go from there. Okay guys, we're back. And uh, we've let the car dry overnight last night. And uh, so we're gonna paint details on next. Um, because it's a solid model, we're gonna do uh, semi-gloss black for all the windows and then um, We'll do the same for the rims. We'll just do like the blackout package on this. Um, I think there's a little bit of a lip spoiler, maybe not. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. Um, and then I have some other stuff we'll be using for uh, some of the uh, finer details like headlights and turn lights and stuff like that. Um, so this is uh, Tamiya paints. Uh, these are acrylic. These are really good for details. They do a good job coloring. Um, be sure to shake them up a little bit. I've already done that, so we're just going to go ahead and dip these in. You just kind of want to use a really fine brush to just get in and dab. When you're mixing paints like acrylics and enamels, what you want to do is give their, give yourself a good 24 hours in between those paint layers so that everything has time to dry. Otherwise, they won't blend very well. So, there's the first window. There we go, there's the second one. All right, I'll finish filling these in. We'll be right back. Okay, with the windows painted, we're gonna move on to the rims. Same thing, just more more black paint. Just gonna dab it on. We're gonna go over the tires themselves with flat black. There you go. Go in from behind as well. Try and get in there so that that black kind of be in there. Otherwise, when you look in, you're still going to see the paint, Oops. the resin, I should say, the resin color. So we're going to go in underneath and just turn. There we go, just like that. Bad. Not bad at all. Then uh, we'll flat black the tires there. Let me paint the others quick. Okay, rims are all painted. We're into uh, flat black now for the tires. Um, same thing, this is Tamiya.
Uh, so this one, they make a rubber color. I don't really like it myself personally. I feel like it's kind of brown. But uh, you just want to go over it just like this. It doesn't take a lot of paint, so you know when you get like a drop on your brush, you don't want to fill in all the detail that's there. front edge of it as well and then the back edge just like that that will dry Sorry, I can't see that very well there that's gonna dry and look pretty decent okay our next step headlights tail lights turn signals um, so, and then this is uh, accent line, and uh, you'll see what that does here in a second. So, we'll start with headlights and the front turn signals. This one, I'm using an even smaller brush. The reason behind that is, is we're pretty much just going to dot it. And that's a little bit too much. Just like that, since it's round headlights anyways. So we're also gonna do the same. I apologize, it's kinda of off camera. With the fog lights. Just like that. And I think that's ought to, ought to be good for the headlights. Next, we're gonna do turn signals. Touch this a little bit closer, there we go. Next, we're going to do turn signals. These are both uh, enamel paints. They look really nice. Turn signal amber and stoplight red is what they're called. Um, so just in case you're ever curious about that, you can see that nice color to them. I've used these on model cars that I've built. They look really nice when they come out. Um, enamels, of course, are different. You can't thin them with water. You need enamel thinner. These are more clear and thin, so we're probably going to need to do this a couple times. But just like that, they're in there. It's kind of hard to see in the color, but they're there. Um, and then I'm going to add some to right here. And to right here. Because I know that's where they are in the real one, just like that. Okay, and just the front. Here comes the back. This one's kind of easy because it has the solid taillight bar across the back and it's already red. So this is just kind of highlighting it. We're just gonna run it in there just like that. And that's pretty much it. It's almost the same color as the paint of the car. Okay, so the Tamiya panel line accent right here. This is really good stuff for getting in and flowing around some of the details like the front grille. So this is what it looks like. You just touch it. You can see it flows in nicely there. And then we're going to do the same up here. We want it just to kind of fill in. Just like that. Nice details. Not too dark. Anything like that. We're going to do the same at the back. Just the back license plate. We want it to be just a little darker, but you're still going to see the paint color. And we're going to go around. Tail light. Just to make that pop a little bit. Just like that. This is great stuff. You can use it. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. You can use that um, pretty much anywhere on any model, even trains. Highly recommend it. Um, 
you will not you'll not regret it at all. Okay. The last step is the fact that we made a couple of small mistakes. Like there's a spot on the hood right there that is black. So we're going to basically touch that up with a small paintbrush again. So here's the original paint that we used. You can see how close that looks to the turn signal red. And it's pretty close. I'm gonna go back to our tiny brush here. Don't need a lot, just a little bit. It's right here on the hood. We're just gonna kind of do this. Kind of dab and draw it out a little bit. And that'll help it blend. When that dries, you won't even notice. And then we'll check the, the other lines and make sure that we need, don't need to do it anywhere else, like up here. be back in a minute when we put the wheels on and uh, clear coat it. Okay guys, last step for ease of use, we're just doing tester spray lacquer. And uh, same thing as before, shake up pretty well, light coats. Doesn't take a lot, especially on something this small. That's about it. Too much and uh, it'll run and cool and then you will get uh, like a cloudy looking type of top to it. Like, I don't know how to describe that. It looks faded, basically. So, just like that. Other than getting tires on yet, which we're still going to do here in a second, um, this one's done. Okay, last but not least, onto the tires. I cut the axle stems off of these a little bit shorter on purpose, um, just because sometimes those holes that are 3D printed where the uh, axles would normally be, you can kind of see that they um, are not the best. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna tilt this up more so I can do this and zoom in a little bit for you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take super glue. And you just wanna dot it right there. Use tweezers that are fine like these to grab. that just like that okay everyone we're back for the moment of truth here's the old 3d printed one using a different process still not bad but here's the new completed one Not bad at all. Decent details, like how it came out. Looks good to me. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the process. If you guys need any help with uh, 3D printing, let me know. I do have stuff available that's 3D printed um, that I've designed myself for your model railroad. It's on my coffee store. Feel free to check that out. If you're looking for something, let me know. I will post links in the in the description to a couple of my collections on model railroad stuff that you guys can print. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.